Antarctica! Oh. Hey, what's happening, everybody? It has been so long since I've done a thrift haul. I've been saving good stuff, so I'm back. Hey, it's Jason T. Smith, and I'm back with thrift haul number, I think it was 50, number 50. And on number 50, since it's a special number, i got to have a special occasion. We've got Kim with us tonight. Hello, Kim. Or Hello. Afternoon. That's good afternoon. Hi. How are you? What's happening? Kim's got some crazy stuff to share. I hope someone tuning in uh, can help or maybe knows someone who can help. And we'll get to that in a minute. So you'll see what we're talking about here. Uh, and I'm not usually the guy that does shout outs. I don't, you know, not that I don't mind doing shout outs, but you know, I'd like to get right to the content. But I do see Trader Don in the chat. And I have not seen my boy Trader Don in forever. Oh, Trader Don. Yay! How are you? But while I'm in there, I see Brenda, I see Robin. I feel like Romper Room. Romper <laughs> Bumper Stomper <laughs> Dude. Tell me, tell me, tell me who. Who's out there today? <laughs> Hello, Mary and Val and Barbara. <laughs> and one other thing I want to share because people were talking about how cold it is wherever they are. Yeah, that's blue skies and the, the windows are open and it is 78 degrees. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it is absolutely 100% beautiful here. Like if this was if it was like this all year, everyone would live here. I'm glad it's hot so everyone doesn't live here. Cuz this is it's so pretty nice perfect. here today too. Yeah, and for those you know, Kim's in Southern California in the LA area, the armpit of the 405 and the 10 as I like to say. <laughs> I'm not really there. It's not really where I live. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 77 in Burbank. Yeah, very nice. Speaking of, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring up the graphic in a minute when Kim's talking, but I am coming to LA in two weeks uh, to teach a couple of classes and speak at the Long Beach Meetup. So if those of you like to uh, take a class, we're doing, I'm doing two classes. Uh, I'm doing an in the thrift store class. So we're going to be up and down the aisles looking at uh, what you should buy and what you should skip. That's the more important part. Because uh, things that are uh, attractive sometimes are not good things to buy. And then I'm having a four-hour classroom class where I'm going to take you from things you should be looking for all the way through taking pictures, listing, customer service, selling it, and shipping it. So we're going to go through all kinds of stuff. And funny enough, I had a new assistant start today. So I was I haven't taught shipping and shipping boxes in a long time, Kim. And as I'm saying the words, I'm like, yes, if you're not good at this, <laughs> it sounds insane. The USPS has set it up. When you got to explain regular priority, uh, like flat rate, regional box, it, we know it. So it's easy for us. But to tell someone else how to do it, they're like, <laughs> you don't just put it in the mail? And, and I, I warned her. And then as, as I'm saying the words, because I have not said them out loud in quite a long time, I'm just like, oh, yeah, this sounds insane. This absolutely sounds insane. It kind of is. I mean, if you look at all the options, it kind of is. It's really, <laughs> they could make it a little easier. No, they could. And I'm really good at it. So part of the class is going to be a good amount of time spent on the classroom class, uh, spent on shipping, how to the different boxes, when to use them, how to not lose money. That's the one thing I see the most is people like, I keep losing money on shipping. I never lose money. And I think it's easy, but also, and here's the big also, I've been selling online and shipping for 18 straight years now. So it's second nature to me because I have, you know, Kim, you're still new at this. How, how long oh, you been yeah. selling? Um, a year and a half. See, you're still young and you're still like, I need help with this big thing. Oh, absolutely. Jay. So um, I'm good at it because I've stayed with it, but I can teach it. I can really teach it. It's really, really, it, this is going to sound really like I'm like, I'm all that, but it is easy once you have someone who can teach you who knows how to do it really well. So, yeah. so if you're, if you, if you haven't any issues, uh, the class is definitely for you. I will pop up the link at, in the show while Kim's talking. Uh, the one thing I forgot to prep. Oops. But uh, I want to know they're coming and then coming to Kansas City, Missouri to speak at the Reseller Fam Live event, uh, March uh, 8th and 9th. And I'm doing a class the day before in a thrift store. So if you're in the Kansas City or Middle America and you want, and you know, we don't get to the Middle America too often. So if you always want to take a class, now is the time. And uh, yeah, those of you asking, it's a replacement. Uh, I am on to a new assistant. Sophia moved on to something else. And so I am starting a new, and you know, when you start a new, especially if somebody who's never sold online, they don't they don't come with no bad habits, none, because I'm going to teach them my way. <laughs> All right, but speaking of teaching, Kim, let's get into it. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the things we found. I'm going to start with some normal stuff just to show you the good okay. stuff. Because what's funny was my new assistant, who is a thrifter, just not a seller. She's like, where you find all this cool stuff? I'm like, savers. And she goes, dang, I got to go with you. I go all the time. I don't find this cool stuff. <laughs> 
So uh, the first thing is, you know, it's uh, although uh, almost 80 here and blue skies, a lot of you are saying, yeah, it's eight degrees where I'm at. So y'all still need hoodies and winter wear. And so uh, I thrifted some great hoodie sweatshirts last week and I forgot to tell my system to rezip it back up. But uh, this one is when she went really gaga over and I paid a uh, $4.99. Let's see. It is a Tenacious D 3XL hoodie. <laughs> That's cool. For those you don't know, awesome. Tenacious, <laughs> Tenacious D is a band that is made up of two actors and they play acoustic guitars. <laughs> and it is Jack Black and Kyle Gass. And Kyle is on the back and it says, Tenacious D is watching you. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> so five bucks, it's 3X, great size. Good size, yeah. It's only for sale on a British website. That's the only place I can find it for sale. Huh. No recents, no solds on eBay. So I'm gonna put it up in like the 50 to $60 range for sure. That is great. See, I think your Savers has much better things than ours. Well, and here's why. And people say it all the time. My mom comes out. She's like, we don't have any new stuff at our Savers. Yeah. And, and here's why. It's such a transitional city, and it still is to this day. It's, the dad moved in till today. Vegas is like Hollywood in the 40s. People hopped on a bus. They got off. They thought they are going to be the next star. The same still happens here. People think they're going to be the next hotshot singer on the strip, the next hotshot bartender, the next hotshot showgirl. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't happen, they just cut bait and run and they drop everything at the thrift store. Yeah. Cause yours definitely has great things. <laughs> now people complain that the price are a little high and I agree, but I always have a 20% off because when you use the frequent buyer card, as mm -hmm. long as you spend hundred bucks, the next time it's 20% off. So if you look at the price and peel that 20% off, that's about normal ish. Yeah. And I don't I, think that the price is super high. I mean, not next to, I mean, LA's price is probably around the same and the stuff's not cool. I mean, there's right. some, but not as cool as your stuff or some. All right. We're staying in the hoodies, okay. but this time we're moving over to the ladies. So okay. to the ladies. And this is a pretty sweet little. What's it say? Yeah, oh. the oh, Volkswagen. That's cool. Isn't that a cool yeah. little Volkswagen um, hoodie? And it's soft and it's got this cool little lining. And this was a uh, $3.99. I like that. I'll probably put it up for like 30 bucks. Oh, by the way, everything you see is for sale. Everything. So if there's something you like while you're watching live. So those of you uh, who are watching live, cool. If you're watching after the fact, reach out to me directly. I'm going to throw up on eBay if you want it. If you're a, and I'll tell you the sizes when I do the clothes stuff. If you're a girl who is a size XL and you want this cute little Volkswagen hoodie, hit me up. If you're a 3X dude or, or lady that wants the Tenacious D, hit me up. I'll be more than happy to sell it to you. All right. I'm going to ask for help because I can't find this anywhere. I am okay. usually good at reading death metal band names because they're written really crazy. Right. I cannot read this one to save my life. So I'm asking for help out there. Hold it back a little. Oh, geez. <laughs> yes, that does say something. I'm not exactly sure what. No, hold it back a little. Let's right. see. Yeah, that's a tricky it one. It looks like rep. I don't know. I see like ridiculous or something. Uh, I don't know. Now here's where it gets a little weird. So on the back, it says, name your poison. There's no ultimatum. And so I Google that and nothing comes up that kind of matches up to death metal. So I'm not sure if I grabbed, it, it seems like too good of a shirt to be like a local man making shirts at the mall. Right. It, it, huh. It's a pretty good graphic. Uh, but again, if death metal is your thing and you like this shirt, it is a two XL. Hmm. We'll have to look at that later. Now I want to find it out, figure it out. Zombie licious. She thinks it says zombie licious. Does it? Let's see. Hang on. <laughs> I know, that, see. Would, that would be hilarious if it said zombie licious. It's one of those things you have to hold far back and yeah. you have to look. No, there's not enough letters. I like your thinking, Angelique, but there's not enough letters. <laughs> it is cool. So I look forward to seeing what it is. Debbie Weeder says it says Catholic? What? Catholic? Of course, church lady would say that. No. That's what she sees. Good in yeah. everything. <laughs> Name your poison. <laughs> All right. Now, here's one, Kim, that I think could be quite a good uh, find because, and here's why, popular person forever, by loved by millions, and I can't find this sweatshirt anywhere. Okay. So, there we go. It is from the OWN Network. Oh, Oprah. Yeah. So it's not an exciting hoodie, just gray, but people love Oprah stuff and I can't find anyone listing or recently selling an own one. O o own is Oprah Winfrey Network. Winfrey Network. And now you said it's gray because it looks black from where I'm sitting. Yeah, it's gray. Oh, okay. And it is size uh, large. And I think I paid like $3.99 for that one. 
but with nothing to base it on, I'm thinking like at least 50 bucks. Cause if you look at, uh, especially vintage over mm -hmm. sweatshirts, they're like in the $50 range. Yeah, I would do 50. And then I got this because it's timely. Now, I thought it'd be worth more than it is. It, it, it sells, but it's not an expensive sweater. It is made by Emerald Isle of, of in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And based on the fact that we're a month away from St. Patty's Day. Which is, you know, celebrated in Ireland. <coughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> or not. That's cool. I like that. Those are my peeps. <laughs> and this is a, uh, yeah, no size. So it's like a medium large, but, but, it, and like That's I said, cool. it's not selling for a ton, but those were a, a month or so ago. And now that we're on the precipice of, of, you know, St. Patty's day, yeah. I'll put it up for like 35 bucks Cool. because again, not, it's not cold where everybody is. So, mm -mm. you know, I don't want it to sit because once St. Patty's day passes, no one will be yeah. looking for that for quite a while. No, not till next year around this time. Uh, all right. While I, uh, while I prep, uh, let me show one more thing and then I'm going to hand it off to you, Kim. Okay. Sometimes happy accidents happen. I grabbed this as I was checking out. I thought, nah, too expensive. And then I forgot to actually pull it away from being checked out. I found it in my bag later. Uh-oh. Now, if you tune into the thrifty business, I did it twice last week. One time, one so good. This time was good, though. Okay. Oops. So this is a plush Mickey Mouse as Jack Skellington. With the tag still. Wow. And it was eight That's bucks. So cool. It was eight bucks. Oh my God. See? And I meant, I meant to put it away. Dollar. And luckily, when I looked it up, it sells consistently for $30 all the time. So easy to okay. ship. There's a market there because there's so many solds. So this was a good accident. Thursday night's thrifty business will be not a good accident. All right. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> so happy, happy accident. Yeah, I'll make like twenty ish bucks, you know, eighteen bucks. So I'm happy with that. Easy to ship, you know, no, no breakable. Yeah. yeah. So again, if that's something you like, it's for sale. All right, now Kim, uh, this is a different, little bit of a different situation. She has kind of fallen into some stuff that she needs to sell, mm -hmm. and it's very unique. And a lot of it's like I don't know Look what what it is. Work. So Here, I'm going to hand it over to you for a second, and uh, let's start with okay. the first thing there. We're going to start with this. Doesn't it look like it should be like a helmet? <laughs> um, I, it has a cutout edge here, and then there's cutouts on the bottom. So that's the inside here. And then it's got a spout, and I know it's made in Japan, and it's clay. It's pottery. But I have not a clue what this would be used for. I have, I mean, it's just, let me see, let me see down the spout again. Okay. There's that end. Can okay. you see that? Yeah. Okay. And then here's the big end, but they don't go through. Yeah. So they're two separate pieces. Huh. And then the cutout here is kind of decorative, but if you flip it around onto this side, it's not decorative at all. And it's a tiny bit smaller. So I have no clue what this is for. And see, that's where, you know, we're, Not we're, all, a clue. we're all good at thrifting. We're all good at research. But when you don't even know where to begin. What it is. And it and it says, I mean, on here, there's a little sticker that says Japan. And then on the inside, it's got the stickers still that are in Japanese. But not a clue. So here's what, here's what the chat's saying. Okay. Something that sits over a candle to heat something up like sake. Candle cloche, cloche, C-L-O-C-H-E. Okay. Or for burning some incense. But the uh, incense, how would it come out? Because it's closed, see? It's not well, an opening. I kind of like this one, but I'm not sure why the top would be. Uh, at first, I thought it was a toad house. Oh. Huh. I kind of like that. I kind of like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I now have to look that up. Yeah, you know, put it in your garden, the toad lives in there, and you know, heck, I kind of like it. Yeah, I do, too. That's cool. All right, my next thing. Oh. I found a couple cool things. Here's okay, so the someone, someone, someone else oh. said it's a sake heater. Someone else says two people have said to heat sake. Okay. So you just put a candle or a warmer underneath and then put the bottle in here, I assume, right? So this yep. would come. Yep. So we got two people saying that. So that makes sense. I mean, and see, this, you know, this is. Yay! Our, I'm so excited. This is my shows and this is my groups put together because that's why I built all these things to teach, to help. And then when you're stumped, 
you know, uh, in the thrifting board, we got 38,000 members and, you know, a bunch of you guys watching live now and watching after the fact. And I know I'll get a lot of messages. It's a sake heater. It's a sake. <laughs> and you know what? I have been rattling my brain around it for two days thinking, what the hell could this be? So thank you. Oh, Tracy said we use them in Hawaii where she used to live. Thank you so and, much. And Robin, Robin's saying pour, you pour the sake right in the spout, heat it from underneath and then pour it right out of there. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'll have to do some more research, but thanks. Listen, quick, I'm going in a direction. Yeah, and real quick before we go to your next thing, Deb, no, not San Marcos, San Diego, San Marcos, the blanket, which you'll see in a minute. All right, back to you. Have you have a San Marcos blanket? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> I never find them. All right, here's another interesting thing. It's I'll show you the back first. Can you see, or is it too shiny? All right, so get it up to the screen. Uh, yep, nope, you're seeing too much of me. Uh, okay. Angle it uh, to the side a little bit. To the left, my no, 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 don't move the whole thing. Just angle it a little bit. There you go. There you go. That way you don't see so much of me. Okay. okay anyone can read that. I'll give you a dollar right now. Okay. Then I'm going to turn around and show you the front. I know it's a hanging because obviously it has a little hanger. There's the front. Yeah. That's like a Korean, uh, Korean devil mask. I, think. I don't know. I don't know if this is in, is it in Korean? Is it in Japanese? Yeah, that's uh, so. it's cool. It's real cool. Yeah. So let's uh, yeah, just so let's see if anyone watching live has got uh, yeah. some uh, ideas for that. Yeah, it looks kind of scary. <laughs> I'm not so sure I want to hang it in my place. Yeah, it's it's uh, it it's is kinda, bitching. It is cool. I just want to know what it is. Must be like a some deity or some some something cool. <laughs> let's see. So Tracy, uh, so Trader Don says he thinks it's Japanese, which okay. makes sense. Uh -huh. And uh, well, now Tracy said it's Chinese, so now we're gonna have a fight in the chat. <laughs> okay. And Tracy said it's to ward off evil. Ah, okay. But she Val, thinks it's Val says it's scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that it is. I can see it could ward off evil, could ward off friends too. <laughs> have this hanging. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, creepy, but it'll sell. Creepy. So we got a lot of creepies coming yeah, up there. So there you go. Creepy. Um, okay. Let's see my All next right. thing. Hold it you, there. Hold, okay. You don't have a ton, right? No, I have. Um, no, I have just a couple more. Okay. So yeah, let's hold it there. So, you okay. know, we'll, we'll, we'll let the chat ruminate on that and see what they come up with besides creepy and scary, which I agree with. It is. Oh, I also would add badass because I think it's cool as hell. <laughs> creepy, scary, badass. Yeah. And that's your title. Boom. We just wrote the title. There it there is. Okay. Badass wall hanging it's creepy and scary so if you watched thrifty business a couple weeks ago uh <laughs> debbie says it's a key holder to hang off the horn <laughs> debbie's giving me De debbie's giving me private commentary so that's funny <laughs> <laughs> i uh, want to know what bill w thinks <laughs> so, so uh good god's king chris said it is japanese so we got two for japanese okay so good there. All right. So San Marcos blankets. If you're not familiar with them yet, you should be. And if you're not familiar with them yet, that means you're not in the thrifting board and you're not watching my shows. So hopefully you're just tuning in for the first time. Hello. I'm going to teach you something that's going to make you a ton of money. San Marcos blankets would be the blanket your uncle would have had if he had a van in the like <laughs> late 70s, early 80s with a scene paint on the side of guys skiing down a mountain while there's a giant eagle flying in the background. And then he had a king size bed in the back of the van. This is the blanket that would be on that bed. And the bumper sticker that said, don't come and knock in if the van's rocking. <laughs> or, or ask gas or grass, <laughs> no one rides for free. free. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago on Thrifty Business, my thrifting tip was to keep your eyes out in every section. If you don't go, even if you don't normally shop in those sections, walk up and down real quick. Mm -hmm. Because in the vest section was this San Marcos blanket sitting on the vests. So not in the blanket section. All right, let's see. And let me get it up here. This is gonna be a little tricky because it is a gigantic one. So bear with me here. Uh, oh, that's so cool. It's a tiger. Yep. And bamboo or something on it? Yeah, so it's a tiger in the jungle. And so the way you know uh, San Marcos for the most part is- Flip it's it. Color, it's, yeah, it's the color opposite. You know, it's the negative on the other side, so. And so this is a big that dog. Is great. This is a king size bed one. I paid nine ninety nine, and to give you an example of what it's going to sell for, here are some solds. Now I don't like the way the first one is done for two reasons. Uh, that's what, what all what's all that extra in the background. Plus it says San Marcos question mark. Come on now. <laughs> 
But if you see this next one, this San Marcos with a little family uh, sold for 200 This tiger sold for 250 Jeez. Okay, so Robin's got an answer for you. I was gonna just going to say that to you. I just saw Robin's comment. She has, she knows okay. who it is. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so uh, here's another one sold for under 35. That really is San Marco, oh, San, San Marco style. Yeah. So when you're doing your research, make sure you're actually comparing apples to apples. San Marco style and San Marco's question mark are not San Marco's blankets. Uh, but here's one that sold for 60 and I can't find this one anywhere. So here's a purple one in the same kind of vein for 68. I expect to get no less than a hundred dollars for this blanket. Wow. There's one that sold for 158. You're the San Marcos whisperer. Yeah. I find them all the time. There's one that sold for 175. And although it's red, it's kind of like, you know, it's the tiger in the jungle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so keep your eyes peeled for San Marcos and, and I'll show you the tag real quick. And uh, somebody did say uh, 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 a wrong information the other day. I did correct him in the thrifting board. They say all San Marcos blankets are two-tone like this, and that is untrue. I actually sold a full-color San Marcos. Those aren't as common, and they're not worth as much, but I still got like 60 or 70 bucks for it, and it said San Marcos. And she was like, oh, wow, I never knew that. Huh. So here's the tag. This one's a little faded, but it will say San Marcos right there. See it? Uh -huh. San Marcos. San Marcos. Now I never it, find them. It, and guess what? Guess where I find the majority of my San Marcos I blankets? I don't want to hear because I, I know in it's by me. In your neighborhood, actually. Yes, I know. I find them in LA all the time. Well, they must be like special. They they put them out when they know you're around. They feel the whisper is coming. <laughs> uh oh, Trader, I wonder if it was USA made. I think they're Mexican made, aren't they? Or am I, am I mistaken? Uh, I thought the they were made in Mexico. Yeah, hang on. I'll go back to the tag. There it is. Well, that's a little faded. Hang on. Let me, let me get my brand new magnifying light. <laughs> yep, made in Mexico. Yep, normally made in Mexico. Uh, but, <laughs> let me get my brand new magnifying light. That thing's huge. <laughs> yes, they are kind of plush velour type. Yeah, that, that's kind of a good way to mm -hmm. describe them. They're really heavy duty. They are super warm. We don't need them here. That's for yeah. dang sure. Um, and yeah. then somebody said, and, and great, Lillian. Somebody said, are beater lac blankets as good as San Marcos? Pretty close. People hunt for beater lac too. One of the members of the thrifting board found a beater lac Mickey uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice one the other day. I'm like, that's wow, cool. that's, that's awesome. Right there. That is great. All right. So, um, uh, for those who don't know, a lot of my friends call me Big Girl for many reasons. <laughs> one of the reasons is what, Kim? What is in my hallway? Candles, a whole cabinet of candles. Yep, my candle, my he candle cabinet. Them. So yes. <laughs> I, I thrifted this one the other day, the witch's brew. Uh, uh -huh. I was going to keep it, and then doing a little poking around, I found out that this label is the rare label. And so, if you look at eBay, the regular bitches, bitches, <laughs> the regular <laughs> witch's brew. I'm channeling Miles Davis there for a second. The bitches brew. Is in the fifteen to twenty five dollar range, but there's only one with this label listed for forty nine dollars. Granted, it's not Halloween, but I'm not keeping this now. I'm going to sell it. I, I did pay eight bucks, which is good for a Yankee candle. If you're going to burn it, that's a great deal. Mm -hmm. But if I can turn eight into about fifty, that's I'm doing even better. It. Heck yeah! That uh, you and your candles. <laughs> oh, somebody, somebody wants to know. Uh, I think Ryan wants to know what the name. Everyone was talking about the light. Uh, yeah. Because we all need it. Our eyes are getting old. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the brand. I don't even know what's written on here. Oh, it's uh, of course I'm now looking right into the. He light. needs he needs the magnifier to look for it. <laughs> Intertech, I N T E R T E K. And what's nice about this one, it has two rows of lights in here, and they're LED. So the round light bulb that I had will flicker, and there's two sets of controls right here. Mm -hmm. that you can make them warmer and colder. So when you're looking at stuff, if you need to adjust the lighting. And I use the magnifying glass. I'll take pictures of eBay stuff that's small through the magnifying glass. Will you really? Oh, yeah. So if you get the lighting just right and you put your camera right on the lens, yeah. it gives it a nice, clear, blown-up picture. Wow. That's very cool. You got all these bonus tips today? I know. <laughs> Jeez. I'm lucky. All right. So uh, let's talk Secret Beach for a second, shall we? Okay. You're a member of the Secret Beach. And I am. 
more importantly, you're on the first Seeker Beach cruise. I was. So for those of you watching don't know, I have a, a free Facebook group that's huge, 38,000 members called the Thrifting Board. And then I have a subscription-based group called the Seeker Beach. For those that want to dive deeper into the subjects where I give a, a monthly webinar, we have guests give a monthly webinar. Matter of fact, uh, Kim is going to be our guest webinar this month, talking about purses. We're going to get to those in a second. But on the cruise, we, we went and had fun. Uh, we lived life. And we also had some classes. And so from that, I learned a few things. And so did my wife. And we put those into uh, motion. And so I'm going to talk about the things that Kim got me in motion with in a second. But uh, Joy Williams, who's a lifeguard in the thrifting board, has done now two webinars on denim in the Seeker Beach. And the, the knowledge is worth the price admission alone for her denim. She's amazing. Yeah. And... Um, I, I, did, I did a scroll moment today. I, I was looking up. I was going to show a sold on this, and I forgot to finish. No. <laughs> a squirrel moment? Oh, I sure did. I just realized I never finished <laughs> looking it up before we went live. <laughs> because uh, based on what, what what Joy taught us on the cruise, my wife was running some errands, was next to a Goodwill, stuck her head, only found one thing. But she found these Oshkosh Bagosh made in the USA vintage overalls. The fact that Stacy even went into a thrifting store is huge. Yes. And found those. So she paid seven bucks and this exact pair, dun da da da, just sold for $49 wow. plus shipping. Wow. That's awesome. So that's Thank the kind of stuff we learned on the boat. And then Kim taught us about purses and not just purses in general, but about very specific, specific collectible <laughs> purses that not a lot of people are, are familiar with the brands. I was a most. The one I didn't know, but the one thing Kim uh, was teaching us was to go out and find vintage straw purses. So I have since then got this one. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's so neat. Oh, I like. Now I have a question. I couldn't figure it out. You know, you know, I'm very analytical. And so when I can't figure something out, it's driving my brain nuts. Mm -hmm. So when you open the lid. Yeah. What is this for? Keys. You would hook on the lid. Yeah, I mean that's what I think it's for. All right. There's not a little t a little thing in there. No, I would think you'd hook your keys on there. Yeah, I don't know. So that's uh, I I spent uh, now I spent eight bucks and this had a price tag from someplace else for sixty five dollars. Yeah, that's really great. So what do you what, what what kind of price would you put on something like this? Oh my goodness, I would start eighty five. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, I would start at eighty-five, and then maybe even ninety. I would start it at because it's really cool. This is a cute little like uh, I'll say clutch for better lack of a better term. Boom! Look at this big daddy. Jeez. Okay. And what I like, what I really liked about this one, there's no brand or anything, but man, I like the blue oh, that, lining on the inside. That's really pretty. Oh, you find those so, as savers? Yeah, I got both these as savers. You know, really, nice. really good construction. And there's no real damage to either one of them. And so you had, you had a whole segment on these straw yeah, type purses. And so I went out and found a couple. Yay! <laughs> I like that one too. That's really nice. Oh, How so much wait, did you pay for that? Uh, this one I paid uh, $4.99. So Karen in the chat says, after the class on the ship, I was walking through the casino and saw a really cool painted purse on a lady's lap. Did you try and grab it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll give you 10 bucks for that right now. Especially if she was losing, Karen, you might have got a sweet deal. Oh, that's great. Is that a bag to hold knitting supplies? Maybe. Uh, so someone asked if this was like this little was like to a latch on the outside. There is no latch, mm. but maybe maybe there was, but there isn't now. I wonder. Hmm. So. Well, it's very cool. Yeah. So. so so that's my start because of what I learned from you. And uh, I, I already did purses, but I kind of ignored these older straw ones because I didn't think there was any worth to them. And then you showed us differently. So thank you. Welcome. Yay. I'm so All right. What's, what's your next uh, fun little object you got oh, there that geez. we're stumped on? Okay. Um, okay. Let's do this because I don't know if it's a platter or an ashtray. And I'll show you. Let me show you the back first. Okay. I have all these crazy things here. This says Palm Springs. Can you see it or is it too glary? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Palm Springs, and then it says 49. And then the front looks like this. Now, see, I would think it was an ashtray. Is it is it heavier? Is it heavier? No. Um, yeah. It, it I mean it's pretty 
pretty heavy. All right. So, and then I thought, well, maybe a platter. Hmm. But I thought the grooves in here maybe was an ashtray. So I don't know. I keep wavering back and forth. But 1949, I guess. I don't know. I have to look it up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. More research on this one because I have not a clue. There's a little bit of crazing on it. So I know that the the um, top is a little, the lacquer has cracked a little. But not so bad. I mean, so it's pretty cool. So you have, a, a, in your home, you have mm -hmm. mid-century modern looking end tables or coffee tables or anything? Yeah. Because that's this is the one time where I would not put that on just a plain background like I always recommend. Right. I, I think if you had it on a cool mid-century modern table, just take a shot where you see just see the table a little bit. I think it'll sell it a little better. I really do. That's very cool. That's a great idea. Kind of see it in action. action right. Speak, you know. If we know what it is, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey. Should, should I be putting crackers on it or cigarettes? I don't know. <laughs> so we got a lot of a lot of ashtrays. Uh huh. Of, that's uh, what I thought, and then. And then a, um, a neighbor said, no, I think it's a platter. And I thought, I don't know. So, yay, so a lot of ashtrays. Okay, well, right, it's a so, huge so, one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's for your Italian aunt who would just have a <laughs> mountain of ashes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I had I had plenty of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that, was, have, that was my childhood. All right, I have one more thing. Let's see. Well, actually two, but if we're running. Okay. We're running on close to time. I'll just show one. Okay, this you would think. Okay, I'm gonna look this up, and it's gonna be pretty crystal clear. And then you open it up, and this is what it is. And it comes with. Oh, you just lost something. Yeah, I know the lid because I'm gonna show you. It comes with this ribbon. It's like a ribbon. It's not. It's not canvas. It's not. It doesn't feel really durable. It comes with a lot of different cords, and this was in the, what's in the little white thing that I just the lid fell off of, and it says family made on this, and then it comes with a lot of different cords that little plugs, and then here's the direction. Well, here's part of the directions. <laughs> oh, oh I, I, I know what it is. Now. And I thought, was it a transistor radio? But there's no tuning in, really. There's an off and on. So I have no clue. But the whole, you know, like. The whole thing together doesn't really make sense. I don't know what this would, what this has to do with this. So I'm a little perplexed on how these all fit together as one thing. But it's in the case. It doesn't, it's never been used. So. Yeah, we do have tri tri to back up a sec. Trish just say the ring on the purse is to hook your keys on. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Cool. That's what I thought. Robin wants to see the front of that weird box again. Okay. Family mate. And then now, the inside. Is that, is that, hey, Kim, is that the brand in the lower right hand corner on the front of that box? On the front? What is that right there? Um, no clue. It's, oh, it it looks like it's part. Yeah. It looks like it's part. It looks like it could be a D E N and then it looks like kanji symbols at the end. Okay. I thought it was a transistor radio, but looks like a tens unit for pain stimulation relief. I don't know what that is, but that's what the chat is saying. Huh. Or at least one person is. Oh, and here's the instructions. Now <laughs> Okay, who's gonna read for us now? Tell us the bedtime story. <laughs> Tell us what we do. I wish there was more pictures that I could follow along, but that's the only picture it shows. So, and the rest is in Japanese. Comes with a warranty. <laughs> yeah, how do I think that warranty? <laughs> well, hmm. So yeah, that was that was the next one. I'm kind of perplexed on a lot of things I got this time. <laughs> yeah, but hey, you got you got some very unique stuff, so I, I like it. All right, yeah. hold off your last thing, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. pop back in here. Okay, so another thing, Kim is not she didn't teach us on the bow, but she's been telling me, and uh, Robin started buying them <laughs> is tins, and I have never in my life looked at tins. So I walked into a Sabres the other day that had a ton, so I called Kim up. So you know, modern technology, get your friends on Facetime and know what they're talking about, and then you buy a ton of tins. <laughs> and so I'm asking her, I'm like, hey, should I buy these tins? And she's like, yeah. So I'm gonna show you an example of 
what not what to do and what not to do. So I picked up. Um, so uh, Joe says tens is used to help the body release its own natural pain fighting ability. It's a medical device. Chris, uh, Christine, Christine said mm -hmm. tens unit for sure. And so did Roberta. So there you go. Tens Thank unit. You. T -N -Z. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So I picked up this uncle Ben's wild rice 40th anniversary 10. And I looked and I like, Oh, one sold for 30 bucks. And this was $3 or $23. One. sold I bought for three bucks. Cool. But then it kept so someone sold one for 23 and someone sold one for less than 350. So <laughs> if you aim low, you're gonna get low. If you aim high, you'll get gonna, high. Uh-huh. That sounds kind of worse than it really is, but so I was gonna show you the ones I found. And what's cool is sometimes you find ones that go together. So this goes with this. It's actually a five tin set. I only got two of the tins, but I should be able to get about 20 bucks for the pair of these. Kim, Kim kept yep. telling me, she's like, yeah, I get $20 for tins. Uh huh. All day long. It's crazy. And even more. I got one for a, it was a tall one that was um, mentholatum drops that were made in Thailand. And I got $40 and it went back to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, two great things from the chat. Uh, uh, Todd just sold what you were just showing one of those the other day for $240. Are you kidding? Really? Yep. Woo! <laughs> And, Ste yeah, and, and Stephanie said she picked up some tins this weekend. She's excited to research them. So the day that Kim was on the phone with me, I found this tin. A day later, I was at a different thrift store and found this tin. <laughs> so, of course, again, I will put them together for sure. And then Kim, as she's watching me, she goes, oh, I just sold that tin. Yep. And what'd you get for this tin? Uh, 24, I think. And look, this ain't old. It has Swedish <laughs> it's crap. Maps. But here's what's weird. Because then I told Kim, I go, hey, I found another one. But I'm looking a little closer. They're actually a little different. Uh-huh. So I got two of the same thing, but different setups. Yeah, I got 24 for the red one. It's a little bit bigger. And I know we're just come out of winter time. Uh, because I found this Mr. Peanut snow scene. Not one, but two. Yay! Now, here's what's crazy. One's got a purple tag. One's got an orange tag. That means they came in and got priced on different weeks. So, so odd that two of the same tin ended up at the same store. Because this was the same store. Okay. Now, this one is assorted candies. But they are imported from England. And I thought this was the coolest tin I picked up. Oh, I like that. That's really pretty. Because it's not so much about the brand, right, Kim? Mm -mm. What's on the bottom? Does it say any, anything on the bottom? No. Ah. But the little sort of candy says uh, imported mm -hmm. from England. And what's unique yep. about this tin compared to the rest is the top is attached. Oops. That's great. That's really so, pretty. And what did you pay? Dollar fifty or dollar forty nine for it? This one I paid. No, well I had twenty percent off, so about a buck ten. Oh. <laughs> so let me ask you this, because it's a question I'm not asked you, because I want to save for the show. Tell me oh. about condition and dense and a little bit of rust. How does that play into the uh, the factor of it? You know what? I sold a tin that was an old saltine cracker tin that the top pieces, like the edge was really rusted. It sold for $30. So I think if someone really wants it, they don't care if there's rust on it. They're going to they're gonna buy it. And tins are so lightweight to ship. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yep. Now, this one I can't find anywhere. So it makes me happy. It says, home is where one starts from T.S. Eliot. Oh. It was made in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look that old. But the fact that I can't find anyone listing nor selling this tin makes me excited. It's in pretty yeah. good shape. That's great. Oh. What? Remember, you, remember, we were talking before the show started. Remember, you said there was a. It's an artist. Yeah. Guess what's on the edge? There's a little tip. Look, read the edge, people. What's so it say? Uh, Is Mary, it, Mary, Mary Engelbright. Bright. That's right. I knew. It. Remember, I said it was somebody's name. I knew it was a Mary something. Yep, made in Hong Kong, and so so now I've got an artist. I got a T.S. Eliot quote, and I got a nice little tip. Yay! And people already saying before I even read it, they're like, "Oh, it's Mary." Uh huh. Because <laughs> yeah, she's got really specific looking art. I mean, her. And I think she sells it at Hallmark, doesn't she? I think. I don't know. But the last okay. one, and this is where I asked about the dents, because this one's a little dented, but it's a oh. giant. That's okay. 
a Night to Sparkle Cinderella popcorn tin that I can't find anyone selling it with mm. or without popcorn. Wow. Nobody. So that's great. I thought it was cool, you know, because some and, kid can put their Legos in this or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. so, I, so thank you, Kim. I'm excited Yay! to try new things because that's what this show and that's what the thrifting board is all about: learning new things. Because do do well in your niche, but then get out of it. Get some crazy Japanese stuff. Get some tins. Get out of your, you know. Well, I actually got heavy stuff this time around too. That's why I'm asking you about postage because I'm now with. I'm thinking of your mom, you know, they do such big things that, you know, skis and big pieces. And so, um, over the weekend, I also have two huge set of salad master. One is a complete cookware set that weighs 20 pounds. And I'm thinking I've never shipped that big. I've never gotten big things ever. So this is way outside my comfort zone. Nice. So you're, you're going to have to teach me shipping on this one. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, I should have done this when I was doing the other purses. So, you know, I have sold purses. I do quite well. I'm not, I don't go through all of them. I go through the ones that catch my eye. This one caught my eye the other day. It is a adorable Minnie Mouse That's purse. That's so cute. I paid $5.99 and the last used one sold for $45. Yay! That's great. That's in great shape. Yeah. So there's that purse. And then this was part of the presentation because I actually did, a, I actually put in a, a man's perspective into Kim's first presentation. <laughs> Because I can do this kind of well. And one of the brands you should always be looking for in ladies' purses, as opposed to men's purses, I guess. <laughs> is oh, there's it, an Isabella Fury. Fury. Yep. And then this is uh, this was found in the shoe section. So back to keep your eyes peeled everywhere. Someone picked up this Isabella Fiore purse, dropped in the shoe section, and I paid uh, $6.99. This purse sells for 30, 30, 30 to 32 bucks all the time. And it sells quite often. That's great. So... And then this one, I thought would be a better deal, Kim, but it wasn't. So uh -oh. I might just keep it because it fits in my house. Oh, I thought you were going to show me a purse. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it could be I'm very like, okay, cumbersome purse. Big girl. No. It's an ice bucket. Oh, yeah, that coolness. That is awesome. But they're only selling for like 15, 18 bucks. And this sucker's kind of big and the pain in the ass is ship. So I think you need to keep it. It definitely fits in your house. So either keep it, or my other thought was I, I vend from time to time at like specialty tiki events. And this would be quite well for. For that kind yeah. of yeah yeah definitely that's very cool on the same vein i found this bitchin pirate mug uh ah. it's got the vintage made in japan sticker no maker's mark and i couldn't find hmm. any specifically like this and uh i would pay a buck ten so you know there wasn't even a thought in my mind but i right. went to look it up to see if i did really really well mm -hmm. and i can't find this mug anywhere that's good so it's cool and then sometimes, Ooh. sometimes you buy just shit for yourself. <laughs> so this will just sit on my desk and entertain me all day. Oh my gosh! <laughs> A giant child you are. <laughs> I am. I need my toys. <laughs> all right, so Starbucks isn't as popular as it used to be, but I'm gonna be able to get twenty twenty two dollars. This is from the You Are Here line, mm -hmm. and you should look if you've never looked at the You Are Here line. Look them up because some are very rare and worth a crazy amount of money where others are worth $5. So don't just buy them because you see them. But when we're done with the show, I'll go to you, uh, YouTube. I'll go to eBay, type in Starbucks, you are here, sort by sold, sort by highest, and mm -hmm. see what's, what's hot. But this is an Arizona one. So there's a whole little Arizona uh, thing going on uh -huh. here. Very cool. And I paid uh, 320 and it's selling for about 22, 23 bucks. Wow. Short and squatty, easy to FOMO, easy to ship. All right, I got a couple more things. I'm going to end on that, and then I'll toss it back to you. So I hadn't seen any good Blu-rays in a while at the thrift store. So these are all from the same kind of vein. These are Japanese animated movies. They're not. They're not anime. Uh, this is my neighbor Totoro, which I heard was a really good movie. It's great. The Wind Rises. Did you see that this one? That is amazing. Yes. Okay, so I should watch all these before I sell them. Yes. How about Ponyo? Uh, great. Yes. And, and are we going to go four for four? I don't even yeah. know what this one is. The Secret World of are 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 ready? I haven't seen that one. All right, so ah. I I paid um four eighty for these mm -hmm. by themselves. They're some they're like twelve to fifteen, but this four set would probably sell for about thirty five, uh, about forty five dollars because one's, one, one's worth seven. But these are these are things that can go together. So all I, and they don't have to go together. Uh oh, John Mahoney just died. The dad on Frasier. Mm -hmm. so, How sad. 
Yeah, I got my little TMZ alerts. So these are the kind of things that can go together. Get your Fraser stuff up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see, any good thing to go in the chat? You need to um, you need to watch those before you sell them. So Todd really is the uh, uh, I do not say it. Uh, uh, Erity of borrowers. I don't know what that means. The who? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yes. You're right. From the novel The Bowers. Yes. <laughs> Good, job. Good job, Todd. Thanks. <laughs> Todd Todd's here today. Yeah, <laughs> it's in my Todd. hand. <laughs> All right. Primo beer. It is the one beer that gets a pass in tiki bars. This is a vintage Primo hat. Uh, a little dirty. I was going to say, it's uh, a little cut and dirty. I uh, picked it up for $2.99. Can't find this hat anywhere. I am going to list it for about $35, $40. Bucks. Do you wash it first? Uh, I might, but the problem is, it's these old ones with the, the foam oh, in it. Oh, there goes I, the foam. <laughs> yeah. So I might hand spot wash it on the front. Speaking of foam, although football season is obviously over, this is called fan foam. This is a Carolina Panthers one. And I paid, uh, uh four, uh, four bucks for it. And this one just sold for $25. Wow. Oh, those are the things they like wave around in the stands. No, oh, this is actually is this is actually hard. Oh, it is. So I'm not exactly sure what you're supposed to do with it. Oh, uh, beat the other teams, people. <laughs> no, this is 3D foam wall sign, so you're supposed to hang it up. Oh yeah, there's the hole. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, Air E Eddie. All right, got it. Air Eddie. Yep. So if anyone's a Panthers fan, I have that. And I think I'm going to throw it to Kim, and then I'll end on two forms of media. Oh, crap. I Wait, what time we got? Oh, yeah, we're fine. I got art. I got art to show you. We'll show it. All right, let's do the art, because the one thing, all right, before I show it, we got any Trekkies watching right now? What, Trekkies, uh, Trekkies you're going to poop your pants. I'm telling you right now, Trekkies. Before we get to that. I like picking up uh, cross stitch, long stitch, and I don't know which it is till I ask one of my friends. But this one was three dimensional, so I liked it even better. <laughs> the owls. Owls are hot, and then the the, <laughs> the leaves. leaves are three dimensional. See, <laughs> and it's it's older, and I paid I paid five bucks for this, and I don't know. I think it's I, I think I'm gonna ask like thirty five bucks for it. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh huh. It is cool. <laughs> Oh, hey, Anton, first time here. How are you? Hope you're enjoying the thrift hall. Hope you're learning a few new things that you haven't uh, uh, learned before. Oh, cruel. Thank you. I'm going to write that down right now. So pause for a second while I write cruel down so my assistant doesn't have to look it up. Cruel. Don't be cruel. <laughs> All right. What else do we like to tell people? Look for Kim. PBN, paint by numbers. Numbers. Plain scenes don't do so well. Specific things do well. And I don't think I've shown this, but I'm sure I'll be reminded if I did. Boom. How about the one-two punch? Oh, my. Jesus as a baby and Jesus as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> With your head in the middle. <laughs> yeah. But good framed. Yeah. Here, let me get the mic out of the way for the, for the screenshot. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I paid uh, I paid like three or four bucks each for these and I'm definitely going to sell them as a pair mm -hmm. uh, I can definitely see them hanging in my my great Italian aunt's uh, living room <clears throat> and I'll probably put them up in the like $60 range a crazy paint by number who would have thought huh? oh hey there's my mom mom I tried to call you before the show where were you mom <laughs> and then this is for the Trekkies this is so cool let the bidding war begin so we talk about paint by numbers. We talk about gravel art. And this is something we have not talked about before. So this is my first foray into string art. And there ain't no better way to start than this picture. Bam! That is so cool. It Look is string that. art on black velvet. How badass that is, is that? That is badass. Uh-huh. Framed glass, the whole works, and it's older. So an undone kit just sold for 50 bucks. Wow. And so we've got this done one, and it's done very, very well. It's yeah. Whoever took the they took the time to make sure everything was even and spaced properly. Yep. That is great. Someone someone followed really the instructions nice. very, very uh -huh. well. 
So if a, if an undone one sold for 50, here I have a framed, nice, ready to hang up. You got to do no work. So uh, Klingon birds of prey. Now, the one funny thing, and I won't bring it up because I won't beat up the person, but you can find this yourself. Someone has this for sale. It's unframed, but it's done. And they, don't know what they, they don't know what they have because it's pictured like this. Yep. <laughs> So make that make that little tip. If you got something, that there is a right side up and a wrong side up. Make sure you put it the right side up when you take the pictures. What do they have it listed as, though? I mean, what's their title? Oh, they have Star Trek, but apparently they so don't know. Oh, okay. Upside down. All right. Hmm. So let's throw it back to you, and then I'll finish with uh, CDs and books, and we'll be done. Okay. Perfect. Oh, my last thing's super heavy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no hernia. We're, we're still we're still in the Japanese. Okay. Now, see, I originally thought this could be a rice cooker. Can you see? It comes with a lid. It's like, it's a crock. But can you see the holes where this piece is here on the side? Yep. There's, there's holes that so go onto like, the inside. So it like seeps in or yeah. it lets the, it lets the, it vents it. It vents it out. Yeah, I don't know. Oops, the two pieces fell. I have to see that. Can you see the holes in there or no? Yep, yep. So I don't know what the heck it is. Someone said it was an old rice cooker, which I don't think. And then someone <laughs> said that it was to make either kimchi or their grandmother used to make soy sauce in it. Hmm. Yeah, I, two things I've never made, kimchi and soy sauce. So. Yeah. <laughs> And for a second, I thought, oh, this is just a little, you know, the rice paddle handle, the holder right here, until I realized, oh, it has holes. It goes into the inside. So we've so. had a we've had two for beans. Beans. Yep. Huh. Do I have a third for beans? <laughs> so okay. at, at least you got your jumping off point of beans. There are now. beans. Okay. Yep. Well, thanks. Oh, Chris wants to know, do the holes go all the way to the top? No. Oh. Okay. No, they they start halfway down. Um, they they take up a smaller section in the in the inside, just like in the middle. Right. And they're kind of, there's there's like one on top, and then there'll be three, and then two, and then one, and then the set of three. So it's not even just. I mean, it's definitely the holes were placed where they should be, and how much, how many. But I don't know. Cool. All right. Well, there you go. You got a jumping off point of beans. Beans. A crockery type pot for beans. All right. So we're going to finish on books and CDs because I'm going to teach you uh, a lot of you something about CDs, uh, especially if you're older or younger. If you're not in this age range, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. Uh, all right. Says, wait, hang on. Uh, holes at the bottom are for pouring out the good stuff and leaving the fat in the roast. And then someone says, I wonder if the holes are to add water without taking off the lid. Huh. That's a good, that's what I think. Yeah. Huh. We, we, start we, with. we ain't get a specific on this one, but we got ideas. That's a good thing. We got Let's ideas. Get the direction here. <laughs> um, so uh, speaking of books, uh, we just had a, a guest webinar in the Seeker Beach uh, by Barbara Colson. She great. was January's guest webinar, and she talked about vintage books. And she talked about very specific categories, not just books in general, because that'd be way too long. Uh, but one of the things she talked about was cookbooks. And even more specifically, kind of small um, niche or neighborhood or style spiral cookbooks. So not big ones, not like Better Homes and Gardens. And so then I went out, like, you know, Kim talked purses. I went out and found some purses. Barbara talks books. I'm like, I'm going to go. Because if, when you learn stuff like this, if you watch this thrift haul, and I'm going to show you some CD stuff, you should go out to your CD section at your thrift store today or tomorrow. Because if you wait a month, <coughs> mother, I'm talking to you. If you wait a month... <laughs> You're going to forget. And so, look, Barbara just <laughs> talks about books, and I want to go out and try it. So I went out, and I found things like Colorado River Favorites, recipes from friends and family. And I paid two bucks for each of these. Now, they're not uh, – and where this book section is in this thrift store, there is no reception. So I couldn't even scan anything. So I'm just like, all right, I'm just going to wing it. And if I'm wrong, I'm learning. But that's when you learn something new. There's going to be mistakes. Uh, this is an Indian cookbook, specifically how to cook buffalo, the Lakota way, the Chippewa way, the Cherokee way, Ottawa, and Cree. Uh, worth, both these are worth about 10 bucks. This one I thought would be worth more because it's so weirdly specific, but it isn't. So this is my one dud. Gula cooking. I think that's what I pronounce it. 
And Gula is creative recipes from a historic past from the low country of South Carolina. So it's wow. a very specific. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Uh, but this one is only worth about five, six bucks. Uh, she did say, look for Amish. So these are favorite recipes of very specific, the Amish of Wisconsin. And we did not get a picture, but what did we see on the beach in Cozumel, Kim? An Amish couple. An Amish couple. She How... in her full like Amish garb. Cool. And they're fully dressed, walking on the beach. <laughs> we were all kind of facing into the bar area. And someone said, oh my God, look at that. And we all turned around and there was mm -hmm. an Amish couple. Walking oh. along the shore. <laughs> like what? Amish couples uh, <laughs> vacation in Cozumel? Like what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Barbara's saying, list them higher. Okay, Barbara, I absolutely will. So this one, um, uh, Barbara said, look for things from like elementary school. So this is Kaman Cuisine, and that's from HF Kaman Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And then this is kind of my winner. And I even got a little example to show you. Okay. White, white trash cooking. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what kind of recipes are in there. <laughs> so the last one. Uh, so the last one sold for 12 bucks. Wow. Yeah, I, I should have, I should have, uh, like, it's got, uh, it's got Aunt Cora's. Uh, <laughs> oh, fruited sour cream salad. That sounds not yummy. Yum. <laughs> Aunt, Aunt Cora's coleslaw. Our Lord's scripture cake. Nice. Skeeter, Why trash? Uh, Skeeter, uh, fun fact, Skeeter was my nickname when I was a little kid. Oh. <laughs> Skeeter's corn pudding, and it's P-U-D-D-I-N, corn pudding. <laughs> Eaters corn. Oh, Barbara said that's one of her favorites. She sold it for over 20. Okay, so look, Barbara's telling me ignore the sold prices because again, we talked about at the top of the show. People aim too low, you get low. You aim higher, you get higher. I am going to aim higher. So this is my first foray into tins. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Kim. It's my first foray into spiral bound recipe books. Thanks to Barbara. And these are the kind of things that we teach in the secret beach. And that's something you think you'd like. If you just message me on uh, Facebook. I'll be more than happy to point you in that direction. All right. I'm going to teach you one really, I'm going to teach you a couple things about CDs. We'll end on that. I'm going to teach you one really kick-ass thing. Before we do, I want to show you the, the uh, classes. So uh, I'm doing a thrift class in Kansas City, uh, Missouri, that is. Don't show up in Kansas City, Kansas. <laughs> on, on March 8th, it's uh, Thursday during the day. We're going to spend about three and a half, four hours in a thrift store going through every section except kids' clothes. And uh, we're going to be talking about everything and what to find and what not to find. So if you just type that out, HTTP, semicolon, slash, slash, B-I-T, dot L-Y, slash, KC Thrift, it'll take you right to the page to get you uh, all the information and signed up for the class. We've had quite a few sign up already. So, uh, and I recommend it. If you've never taken a thrift class from me or anybody else that's really good at this and you live anywhere near Kansas City, Missouri, I highly recommend it. You will get your money's worth. It's only 125 for the class. And most people leave with full carts, hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. of stuff, mostly stuff, Kim, that they've never bought before. That's great. And then L.A., which is even sooner because L.A. is in two weeks. Ah! Oops, I'm clicking the wrong computer. <laughs> okay, so we're doing three things. The 20th, I'm doing a classroom class where we're going to sit for those four hours. I'm going to teach you how to ship. We're going to have some shipping, actually, demonstrations. I'm going to teach you how to list uh, on InkFrog, which is the third-party lister that helps out. Kim could actually use that probably because she's having some oh listing issues gosh. that we'll talk about someday. Uh. Um, uh, and so we're going to go <laughs> over all, all kinds of stuff. So that is a, 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 a pay-for class. That night, I am doing a speech uh, for free for the uh, Southern uh, California Long Beach eBay meetup group. And then the next day, the 21st, I'm having that in-store thrifting class again in the Torrance Long Beach area. And if you go to that website, the HTTP semicolon slash slash B-I-T dot L-Y slash L-A thrift, it'll give you all the details. And again, if you missed the, 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 the ridiculous little website to go to, just message me. I'm Jason T. Smith on Facebook. Really easy to find me. I am everywhere. You also can message me right here in this video and I will get back to you. So come on down, hit the classes and uh, usually classes revolve around a Tiki bar hangout too. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right, let's end on CDs. Cause who, who does, if you're new, you might not know us cause we got some newbies. I started my career selling CDs. I still sell a ton. See this. These are all my CDs for sale on Amazon right now. 
I sell a lot of hundred dollar CDs. I sell two hundred dollar CDs. I have sold two five hundred dollar CDs. I've sold a dozen four hundred dollar, twenty or thirty three hundred dollars, and I'm always buying CDs. Now Kim is new to buying CDs because I'm yeah. teaching her. Because here's what's great about CDs, and Kim will attest to that because she just started. <laughs> They're all the same size, all the same width, and they all weigh the same for the yeah. most part. So you don't got to learn different. You don't got to ship big crock pot uh, kimchi fermenter pots. This no. is easy, easy peasy. I all right. The store. <laughs> yes. So um, the other day, I popped into the thrift store and I picked up a bunch of stuff. And I want to show you a couple things. Nothing here. There's no big winners here. This was not on Amazon. So for a CD not to be on Amazon, it's very rare. Mm -hmm. You could buy the MP3 music on Amazon for this artist. And this artist is Karen Zoid. I ain't never heard of her. Uh, but it was originally priced at $14.99 uh, someplace. So for two bucks, I'll give it a whirl and I'll throw it on eBay. Uh, this is the Spinner's Greatest Hits. It's a $18 to $20 CD. I picked it up for two bucks. And then there was a lot of cheesy 80s Hawaiian music. And it's really <laughs> bad, but people love it. I love the Hawaiians. They love it fine. Kapina is one of the bands. This ain't a great CD, but I can usually get about $12 for it. Mm -hmm. And these, but I would not pick these up if these were used because these sold in the millions. And so they're not rare, but this is an older pink record and a Garth Brooks uh, ultimate hits, but they're still sealed. Right. They still, uh, this one still has the uh, Tower Records sticker on it. So, wow. uh, so you can, for sealed, you can get a much higher price, even though you, you could be selling a like new minty fresh one, but people want that cellophane. Yep. All right. Now, bought CDs the day that I was uh, working on the, the uh, savers that has crappy reception in the CD area. I can't scan. I'm good at it, but I still got to scan. I, I bought like 30 CDs. I only had three duds. So I just want to show you, even somebody who's good at it. Now, some of these duds, I might just keep. Oh, come on. The very best of Christopher Cross. Say, uh, yeah. <laughs> takes me away uh, to where I'm going. All Mr. right. Smith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So here's what's cool. A bunch of 80 CDs that had import barcodes on them. Uh -huh. And when I started looking into them, I'm like, what is going on? And so these are all South uh, African Legit releases of these. So here's a South African Buddy Holly. Wow. This is a South African Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Oh, that's so cool. And so what happens is in the world of collectors, this is a South African Super Tramp. Obviously, it came from the same collection. Right. Um, this is not a South African, but it's Led Zeppelin on Tusk. And Tusk doesn't exist anymore. Now, that was not their normal record label. So it was a combo Atlantic and Tusk. Tusk is what put it out on the CD before Atlantic was making CDs. And it's got its number and all this stuff. Oh, that's so this, so cool. This CD by itself ain't worth that much because it sold so often. But this Tusk version, which I couldn't find this CD, will probably get me about $20. Hmm. Huh. And uh, this David Essex collection was South African. Level 42 is South African. And this is modern, but uh, it's a limited numbered edition. So I thought I'd give it a whirl. It's a revamp of uh, Peter Gabriel shaking the tree. But it's a numbered edition. Huh. That's very cool. So whereas, um, yeah, this, you know, this has got Sledgehammer and Salisbury mm -hmm. Hill. Uh, whereas this by itself is not normally an exciting thing. The fact it that does. it's remastered and it's numbered, it can get you more money. And then the last two things will end on the top two tips. Oh, how do you tell an import barcode? Good question. Good, good question. Let me show you a domestic first. Typically, domestic start with a zero. See the zero? Yes. These start with a six. There we so go. So all imports are six? Not all, but then if you look down here, it'll say. Now, this one, the um, the South African ones, some said made in RIS, which I didn't know what it was. And then I found out RIS was something to do with South Africa. And okay. so uh, like here, for instance, where's the one? Uh -uh. Uh, if you dig around on the back or on the CD itself, it'll tell you made in almost always. Now, I say that. Oh, here. Buddy Holly once said it right on the back. Nice and easy. So Buddy Holly says, uh, that's probably not going to focus, but it does say South Africa on the first line after the date. But this one's weird. So here's a, here's a weird Steely Dan. 
mm -hmm. uh, on some label and some cover I had never seen before. There is no where it was made. Oh, oh, wait a minute. It says copyright in the United Kingdom, so I'm going to say, but it doesn't say made in, which is rare and weird. Huh. There's no year. There's no made in. So kind of odd. But again, those are the kind of things that collectors will want. And we'll end on these two. Uh, Final Fantasy is a video game. Video game CDs go can go for a lot of money. And so I don't bother looking them up. I just grab them. So this is a rare version of this, and it's got an embossed cover. Wow. She raised. Very fancy. And this sells for about forty dollars. <laughs> now no one would no one would ever look at that and be like, what? But I know my video games. <laughs> Great question. Well, most import scan. M most will. Okay. Now, before I show you and give you the last lesson, and then Kim and I will call today and send you guys on your way. Who knows? If I say the word long box, who knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm sure Kim knows. But let me look in the chat. Um, I'm looking at and I'm looking at all kinds of people. Looking at my mom. I know Robin's in the chat. I see Nelly. I see Mary, I see Eric. Who knows what a long box is? It is a very specific uh, item. Nelly does. Yep, I do, I do. Okay, I guess I should ask it the other way. Okay, good. I got a no clue. Sweet. I'm going to teach Debbie something. Lunch? Robin's guess is a long box is lunch. No, Robin. <laughs> we are talking about CDs, Robin. I love Robin. Oh, Robin's answer the best. <laughs> All right. That's in, what they called lunch at her place. <laughs> very good. So some people know. And here's the reason. In the 1980s, when CDs came out, they decided to kill a lot of extra trees and they would package the CD in <laughs> this long box. But there was a very specific reason. CDs were new. There were no such thing as CD shelves or CD racks for record stores, but there were record racks. So for this to work, it had to sit in the record rack. So it had to be Let's tall see. enough. And obviously a CD is kind of short. It had to be tall enough to sit in the record rack. Now, this adds great value to otherwise boring CDs. And here is the prime example. Into the Light by Gloria Stefan might be a wonderful CD, but $3.19 is about the going rate for that CD in used condition. However, if you found this Gloria Stefan sealed in the long box, you can get $40, 10 times your money. Only because it's still in the it's long, long box. box. <laughs> so I would never, ever pick up For the Boys soundtrack on a regular CD at all because no one really cares that much. But to find it sealed in the long box will absolutely get me about $20 where this CD is worth about a penny, really. That's so great. And I'll tell you a funny story and then we'll say goodbye. In the late 90s, I started my career in record stores. I've been working at my career of selling cheerleading uniforms, and then there is off time in the winter. And so I, I they, the local record store needed uh, some holiday help, and I love music, and I don't really work in the winter. So I'm like, I'll go be a teller. I mean, I'm old. All the kids were 18. I'm like 30. I'm like, oh, I'll go work there. And I liked it so much, I ended up coming in as management and left my career. And so we were a used store that took in UCD. So someone brought in a whole pile like this one day. And this girl, Heidi, was working on it. She was only 18 at the time. Mm -hmm. And she gets to this and she goes, hey, come here. I go, yeah. She goes, what is this? <laughs> you know, at that moment, Kim, we weren't all that removed from when these were out. This was just late 90s. I know. And so... I had to explain to her, I go, well, CDs, CDs used to be, come in these long boxes. And she goes, where's the CD? <laughs> she was just so bewildered. Yeah, it's kind of like the first time my kids saw a phone. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a, you, like a phone. rotary? All right. Yeah. <laughs> it all makes you feel really old, really quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My, I have two nieces that only know talking to me is FaceTime, so video. They don't know talking to me even on a cell phone. They so think crazy. when we talk to Uncle Jay, it's on video. Who would have thought we'd be in the George Jetson days? Oh, yeah. Like the other day, I was talking to my mom on FaceTime. She walked away, and my six-year-old niece or five-year-old niece, she just plopped up on the chair because she knew I was talking. She's like, I heard you call. Hi, Uncle Jason. Yay. How okay, bye. And she ran away. But she knows <laughs> that's how we talk. Uh-huh. It's amazing. 
All right, so that was a thrift haul. I haven't done one in forever. I hope you got some good, good knowledge out of that. Do me a favor. Give me a – we got a, over 100 people watching, only three thumbs up. Ooh, excuse oh. me. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not, and make sure to uh, set your alarm Thursday night. Uh, Thrifty Business is uh, my other show. Uh, we'll be on at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. West Coast. Uh, my co-host this week is going to be uh, Texas Gals Treasures herself, Margaret Collier, and for a very specific reason. Our guest this week uh, has a uh, kind of a life-changing story to tell had a career, lost it, got a job. That job, because of an angry customer, he almost got killed, actually almost got killed. <laughs> Quit that night, saw my TV show, Thrift Hunters, said, I can do this, and became a stay-at-home dad who earns enough from eBay to actually spend time with his family and his kids and uh, pay the bills. And Margaret is a stay-at-home mom who does homeschooling and pays the bills by selling online. And so that's why I have, I'm having her co-host this week. So it's one of those stories where, you know, it, it, you can change your life. You can pick a new direction. If you've got your eye on the prize, you can get there, but you got to get to it. And this hopefully is one of them uplifting stories. So please tune in Thursday night. And mom and I will finally be back. We didn't want to do a show this Sunday during the Super Bowl because that'd be silly. <laughs> <laughs> So mom and I will be back with our show, which is called Selling Past Your Expiration Date. Be in Thrifty Over 50 this Sunday. Uh, we don't have a time or a topic yet, but I'll get that very soon. My, if you don't know, if you're new, my mom is 75 years old or, or is going to be 75. Uh, she and my dad sell on eBay and they are killing it and they're doing a great job in retirement. So we pick a subject every week and kind of go over it a little bit slower and draw it out. And go, You, know, you don't got to be old to tune in. You just could be a new seller, but there's always stuff to learn and I'm always giving you stuff to learn. So today, if you learn nothing else, Learn that uh, what long boxes are, San Marcos blankets, and when you got some weird shit like Kim, yeah. bring it to the show, and people will help you figure out what you got. Yep. Thank you. Yay. Yeah. No, and, thanks, and thanks for co-hosting, Kim. You're welcome. It was fun. Sweet. That was, that was a great show. I'm so happy. And now my new assistant can take pictures of all this stuff. Yay. Yay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. I'll see you Thursday Bye. night and then Sunday, and I'll be around the thrifting board and the secret beach all week. And if you want to get into the class in Kansas City or L.A. and you're like, where do I go, Jay? Just hit me up on Facebook. I'll be happy to point you in the right direction. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Hang loose. See Thank ya. you, Kim. We'll Welcome. see you all around. Bye. Bye.